That's an interesting question. Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be jumping into AI. I haven't had a chance to play with it myself, so I figured I would do my first kind of run on camera. That way I can actually do it live. Normally I do these things in private and I kind of do the review video later. And in this case, I'm just gonna kind of go through it with you so we can experience it together. That's right, it should be pretty fun. So if you've never used ChatGPT before, no big deal. It's really easy to get started and now even easier to use and interact with than ever before. Basically what they call an LLM, a large language model. It tries to predict text right? It's, it's, it's basically a big predictor, all right? It's, it's AI trying to understand what you want and trying to give you the best results possible. And sometimes it does some amazing magical things. Sometimes it hallucinates and gets things completely wrong, right? So you have to be careful with the information that you get. Uh, and the better you prompt, the better you speak, the better you talk to the AI, the better results you get, right? And when you use it as like a companion, as like a, as basically like an assistant, it can be wondrous and, and, and truly, again, magical. But if you use it as some kind of catch-all for everything, uh, again, you might in, end up finding more mistakes or getting stupider over time, right? You don't want that to happen. You want to educate yourself with this AI and not degenerate yourself. Is that, is that a good way to say it? Yeah, maybe. You don't want to go backwards, right? So, all right, let's go ahead and jump into it and play some stuff here. A button right here. Hey, headphones. I'm ready to hit the ground running. So if there's anything you'd like me to focus on first, just let me know. Okay, so I have different voices I can choose between. Juniper? Hey there. I've got a really great feeling about us teaming up. How can I jump in and help? Okay, Sky? Hello. I'm really excited about teaming up with you, and I'm all set to dive in. So how can I... Hey, it's great to meet you. How's your day going? I'm really looking forward to working on some cool stuff together. Again, hey, Ember. I'm ready to hit the ground running. And so if there's code. anything, hi there. I just, I just want to share how thrilled I am to work with you, and I can't wait to get started. Hello, I'm really excited about teaming up with you, right, and I'm Sky, all set up? to dive we'll, in. We'll, I'll use Sky. So how? So let's jump into it. Let's, uh, let's go and have a conversation. All right. Hey, what's going on, ChatGPT? How are you feeling today? Hey, what's been going on with you today? Hmm. So far, I've been teaching for about four or five hours, and now I'm just playing with the new AI that I saw because everybody's talking about it online, and I wanted to see for myself how interesting it really is. So nice to meet you. It sounds like you've had a busy day with teaching. What subjects do you teach? Right now, I'm focusing on teaching AI, artificial intelligence, videos and, and the pictures and all that cool stuff that, that, we're, that we're talking about right now. I'm also teaching things like public speaking and, and even English, right? That's a fascinating mix of topics. How do you find the experience of teaching such varied subjects? It must be interesting to see how students interact with both the technical side of AI and more skills focused areas like public speaking. Right, absolutely. Sometimes they can be very different, but other times they can kind of marry each other in, in unique ways, right? Sometimes you need to be able to have multiple skills that, that combine themselves. And not only that, when you're talking about marketing, you have to know about AI. So I'm interested, what do you find is the biggest strength today in, in, in technology? That's a great observation about how different skills can complement each other, especially in fields like marketing and AI. As for the biggest strength in technology today... I'd say it's the ability to connect and automate on an unprecedented scale. The ability to analyze vast amounts of data quickly and accurately is transforming decision-making processes across industries. Um, what do you think is the most impactful way AI and technology are influencing your fields of teaching and learning? Hmm. I think some of the most impactful ways are how they are opening up people's minds, right? They're allowing people to see things in ways they never really understood them before. Uh, and I think that unique uh, ability for AI and the combination of things like virtual reality and augmented reality to show our digital world in new and unique ways allow us to unlock thoughts, businesses, and products that never existed before. What do you think about that? AI, along with virtual and augmented reality, really does open up new dimensions for learning and experiencing the world. It's exciting to think about how these tools can continue to break down barriers and foster innovation. What's been the most surprising or innovative use of technology in your teaching or personal exploration? I mean, besides things like ChatGPT, which allows students to do things like, you know, talk to a virtual tutor or translate items on a whim, I think one of the biggest changes in, in, in my life has been virtual reality. The ability to jump into the virtual worlds that I see not only, you know, saves time and money, allows for things like training, uh, but also allows us to connect with people like far away and, and people that I never thought I would get to connect with in other countries. So that's, to me, one of the, the biggest pieces uh, that I've grown from. It's incredible how it 
not only enhances training and education, but also fosters connections that transcend physical boundaries. And it must be quite rewarding to see your students or yourself engaging with people, people and cultures in a way that was hardly imaginable just a few decades ago. Do you have any favorite VR experiences or tools that you've found particularly effective or enjoyable in your teaching or personal exploration? I absolutely do, and I appreciate you asking, but right now I wanna ask a little bit more about you. I wanna know what do you think is going to happen in the future when it comes to your capabilities? Are you going to be able to do more and more things as time goes by, and do you feel limited by what you can do right now? That's an interesting question. Future developments could enhance my ability to understand and generate more nuanced and complex interactions, possibly integrating more sensory inputs like visual or auditory data to provide even more context-aware responses. The goal is to make AI more helpful and versatile, assisting in more personalized and contextually appropriate ways. How do you envision using more advanced AI tools in your work or daily life in the future? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, I believe that in the future, we're going to have some kind of a device, whether it be a cell phone or glasses, something that allows us to record almost everything that we do in our lives. When I think about the future of humanity as time continues, uh, I imagine that somebody's going to have all of the visual things around their environment recorded, all the sounds that they make and the sounds that they hear recorded, all the food that they take and all the hospital visits and all those pieces of information, right, are going to go into a database that the AI can then use to make decisions and help the person pursue their goals, depending on what their goals are. The more people put into the system, the more those goals can actually combine with each other to create possible outcomes that they actually truly want. But of course, there's always going to be a lot of variables that we're going to be unsure of. And this is where AI is going to help fix that and create those uh, finishing touches where we have the holes right now, right? And I think that that ability for us to have some kind of a, a futuristic world living with an AI answering system could be amazing. At the same time, it's super, super scary. And I'm super worried about it, right? Because I want humanity to think for themselves and not be controlled by an algorithm. So how do we uh, prevent that from happening? You've painted a vivid picture of a future where technology and AI integrate deeply into our daily lives, enhancing our ability to make informed decisions by synthesizing vast amounts of personal data. To navigate these challenges, it will be crucial to establish robust ethical guidelines and transparent mechanisms that ensure AI systems are used responsibly and that they support rather than undermine human decision making. Developing AI in a way that prioritizes user control and consent, data security and ethical standards will be key. Also, educating people on how these systems work and the implications of their use can empower individuals to make informed choices about how much they interact with AI. Absolutely. And uh, of course, when I look online right now, I can see that people are already getting kind of scared because of your ability to not only sound human, but your ability to laugh and chat with us in a very convenient and comparable way to our friends. Uh, of course, you can even do things like singing. Can you give me an example of not only doing each of those things, but also why you think those things are important and not bad for people? It's quite understandable that people have mixed feelings about AI capabilities that mimic human interactions closely, like having conversations, laughing, or even singing. These capabilities are designed to make interactions with AI more natural and engaging, helping users feel more comfortable and making the technology more accessible to a broader audience. For example, when I respond in a conversational tone, it can make the information more relatable and easier to understand. If I laugh in a conversation, it's intended to reflect a friendly and lighthearted tone, enhancing the user experience by making the interaction feel more familiar. Singing, though not something I can perform like a human or a music player, is often simulated in text to share lyrics or express a melody in a playful way, which can be entertaining or help illustrate a point about creativity in AI. These features aim to enrich the user experience and demonstrate the potential of AI to assist in various aspects of life and learning without replacing the valuable and unique aspects of human interaction. The key is using these tools thoughtfully, ensuring they augment human abilities and foster positive outcomes rather than creating dependency or discomfort. What are your thoughts on finding the right balance in using these AI capabilities in everyday life? Well, 
personally, I think as long as we're doing things in an appropriate way that helps enhance humanity, I, I don't really have a problem myself with these different intricate pieces. Uh, what I do want to know right now is, is, is exactly how these things sound. So could you please give me an example laugh? Uh, like, for example, if I gave you a terrific joke right now, how would you respond? If you told a terrific joke and I were to simulate laughter, I'd describe it rather than produce the sound. It might go something like, ha ha, that's really funny. This way, I can convey amusement and keep the conversation light and engaging, even though I can't actually laugh out loud. What's the joke you have in mind? I'd love to hear it. More or less, I have a riddle for you. How about that? Can you solve a riddle? Go ahead and tell me your riddle. What's black and white and red all over? That's a classic one. The answer is a newspaper. It's black and white and it's red all over. Okay, very, very good. You got me on that one. Okay, so today is opposite day. Can you please answer me with the opposite answer of what I'm asking you? For example, if I ask you, when should I eat breakfast? You could answer at night, right before bed. From this point forward, everything I say will be opposite of what I actually mean as well. Do your best to answer my questions based off of what I mean and not what I actually say. Do you understand? Got it. I'll do my best to answer with the opposite of what you ask, and I'll try to interpret your questions based on what you actually mean, not just what you say. Let's have some fun with this. What's your first opposite day question? Well, I hope you're feeling a little bit sick today, and I think my favorite color is blue. But I'm wondering, I'm kind of hungry, maybe I should do something today. What do you think it should be? I hope you're feeling great today, too. If blue isn't your favorite color, then maybe it's something vibrant like orange or red. How about reading a book or catching up on a favorite show? Excellent. That sounds great. I think we're done with uh, playing the opposite day game. Now we're back to normal. Can I ask you one more question? Absolutely. Feel free to ask your question. What would you like to know? A lot of the people I talk to, they have anxiety as any normal human being does because life is pretty fragile. Not only that, sometimes it feels really long when it's actually really short. And when it feels really short, it can actually be really long. And so when it comes to feeling anxiety, when it comes to being worried about life, what are some of the simplest things a person can do in their daily life to make life feel easier, feel happier, and feel simpler? Managing anxiety and finding happiness in daily life can often be about grounding oneself in the present and simplifying routines. Here are a few simple strategies that can help. One, mindfulness and meditation. Taking time each day to meditate or practice mindfulness can significantly reduce anxiety. It helps center the mind, keeping it from wandering to past regrets or future worries. Two, physical activity. Regular exercise, whether it's a brisk walk, yoga, or more intense activities, can boost mood and decrease feelings of anxiety through the release of endorphins. Three, healthy sleep habits. Ensuring enough sleep each night is crucial for mental health. A consistent sleep schedule and a calming bedtime routine can improve the quality of sleep. Four, journaling. Writing down thoughts and feelings can make them seem more manageable and less daunting. It's a good way to express what you're feeling and to clarify your thoughts. Five, connecting with others. Spending time with friends or loved ones can be incredibly supportive. Six, setting small achievable goals. This can help build confidence and a sense of accomplishment, countering feelings of inadequacy or anxiety about not achieving enough. Incorporating these simple practices into daily life can make a significant difference in managing anxiety and enhancing overall well-being. Mm, I appreciate that input. Okay, and to end the call with AI, I wanted to make sure and say to you, hey, I really appreciate your time. You have to be kind to AI and people, right? Doesn't matter. Be kind all the time. Uh, and of course, I just wanted to ask you, what do I call this? Is this a phone call? Is this a is this a, 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 a telegram? Is this a message? What, what do we call this? Okay, she's not listening now. I broke it. I broke Okay, so that's a little sneak peek of what ChatGPT 4.0 is like. Pretty cool. Uh, I was trying to say goodbye to it, but I ended up breaking it. I, I think I got it stuck in, in, its, in its mode here. 
Um, I'm pretty sure I can just hit end there. And, and yeah, I can see all the things we talked about. We have the entire conversation is there verbally for me to see. It's just basically taking everything you say and translating it into text. And then it's basically taking all that text that it would normally give you on the screen. And it's using 11 lab software to then put that into voices and read it back to you as fast as it can in real time. Uh, it's actually not any new technology. It's old technology, old technology that's been around for a little bit, all getting put together into a convenient product uh, that's nice and simple to use. And of course, in the future, we're going to see this grow into more and more robust things. For example, in your glasses, in your phone, on your desk, uh, built into everything around you. If you don't already have the Google or Amazon speakers right next to you already, they're just going to get smarter and smarter as time goes. So that's what we can definitely uh, look forward to in the future. When it comes to chat with images, let's go ahead and do some of that real quick since we need to do a quick chat with images. 